Welcome back to the Week in Review. This is week number 11. I'm Damian David, and as of today, Monday, June 22nd, 2020, I'm with Healthcare Triangle. It's an exciting new company born out of the convergence of 8K Miles and Cornerstone Advisors. I'm very excited to tell you all about it. Over the next couple of weeks, I'll be reaching out through emails and phone calls. I hope we get a chance to connect. More to come on that. If you want to get started and, and you want to take a look at our brand new website, it's at healthcaretriangle.com. All right, let's hop into the headlines, and then I will actually call up our CTO, Sadish Mowgli, and he's going to share with us the vision around the technology and, and how we're leveraging our experiences and our competencies to take it to the next frontier, if you will, for healthcare. And then also, he's going to speak a little bit to why now, in this time of coronavirus and COVID-19 pandemic, it's almost perfect timing for us to be kind of like the phoenix rising from the ashes. We're compelled to be the architects of healthcare progress, and I'm so excited for what the future brings for Healthcare Triangle. Okay, let's hop into the headlines, get going here. Last week, we had a couple of different events. I wanted to recap them. The first was the Meditech Nursing Forum, originally canceled because COVID-19 couldn't do it on site in the Boston area. They needed a way to do it remotely, so they held it online to great success. It was wildly popular. We had three or four of our associates from Cornerstone Advisors back then, now Healthcare Triangle, attend. And uh, we're actively putting together a summary. I will do a recap and a summary for you next week. Okay, more to come. Another recap, our own Kate Corbett, who I was lucky enough to talk with last week as part of the Week in Review. She hosted a tweet chat for Healthcare IT Today about telehealth, and that went really well too. It was very, very cool. I'll definitely be partaking in more tweet chats in the future. Uh, I'll recap and summarize that. She's going to hand over the transcripts for me, and I'll try to focus some, some of the things I find to be the most interesting in that tweet chat. American Hospital Association put in a request to the HHS to extend the public health emergency for the COVID-19 pandemic. The original emergency was set to expire or run out at the end of July, but because of where we're at and because cases are starting to trend and rise higher, they just asked to extend a little bit longer. To that note, it's estimated that now one in four healthcare workers will be at high risk of COVID-19 infection as cases surge after the states began to reopen. To that as well, as of today, the WHO reports record daily increase in coronavirus cases. June 22nd, we've now seen our largest single day increase in COVID-19 cases worldwide. Professional athletics, Major League Baseball, MLB, 40 players and staff members have tested positive for COVID-19 in just the last week alone. Are you seeing the trend here? I hope we're not letting this get away from us again. So please be diligent. Please tell you, your families, your loved ones, your friends, everybody that you can scream it out to. Let's keep the energy and efforts going. Please do the social distancing suggestions. Please consider wearing masks when you go out. Let's get this under control and get past this. Let's get into the stats now. Worldwide confirmed cases have hit 8.99 million as of today. Last week, we were just at 7.69 million. Of that, 4.46 million have recovered around the world. Last week, we couldn't even track it. We, it was off the charts. Uh, we weren't tracking it properly for, at the global level. 469,000 deaths from coronavirus and COVID-19 as of today. Last week, we were at 428,000 deaths worldwide. Let's narrow this focus now into just the U.S. The confirmed cases are now at 2.32 million, up from 2.15 million last week. Of those, 722,000 have recovered. Last week, only 662,000 had recovered. Deaths in the U.S. have reached 122,000 for coronavirus, COVID-19, up from 118,000 last week. Okay. Let's get back to Healthcare Triangle. I now have the honor to speak with Sudish Mowgli, our CTO, and hear about his vision and the future for Healthcare Triangle and what it means for healthcare, for people, for communities, for families. I'm very excited. Let's transition now and hear more. Hey, Sudish, nice to see you. Thanks for joining me on the Week in Review. Thanks, Damien, and it's good to see you as well. 
Yeah, it's exciting times for uh, for the history of the of the the firm and the practice. We are now Healthcare Triangle. So, you know, obviously, me getting an opportunity to talk to you, the CTO, uh, I'm very excited to be able to not only talk with you but to share it with everybody and we can review. So, let's get right into it. I got a couple questions for you. Um, the first one is, you know, the emergence of of Healthcare Triangle presents the convergence of two successful companies to contribute to a combined purpose. Okay, so can you tell me about your vision around how we leverage our experience and our competencies with technologies and services in the life sciences, healthcare, wellness, and pharma to, to be able to drive the innovation of our clients moving forward? Sure, Damien. Uh, so let me first uh, get started with, uh, you know, a little bit about our background uh, with uh, 8K Miles, right? And yeah. the company that, uh, you know, specializes in the life sciences side of the house. And um, one of the things is uh, our core capabilities has to do with uh, cloud. Uh, and by that, I mean the public cloud, uh, which is offered by providers such as AWS, Google, and Azure. Now, uh, and we have actually had a tremendous focus on, life, on the life sciences, pharma, and biotechnology industries, right? And with Cornerstone in the healthcare space, um you know this uh, this confluence of these two companies obviously is uh, to me is a very exciting and a very powerful uh, entity and uh, the reason i say that is there are a couple of trends uh, that are happening in the pharma and life sciences space uh, which actually touch the healthcare industry as well i mean in in general if you really think about it both these industries are very much tied in tied together, right? It is, uh, they are interdependent. Honestly speaking, they are pretty interdependent. And, uh, but uh, now they are actually taking that interdependency to an altogether different uh, level by uh, introducing a concept called personalized healthcare. And uh, what that really means is they want to try to ensure the right treatment is delivered to the right patient at the right time, okay? And uh, in order to achieve that vision, uh, one of the things that they, you know, the, the stakeholders in both these industries realize that they have to leverage data and massive amounts of that data. So the goal is that they would like to take high quality data sets and then use them to compare the, those data sets of individual patients with a, a wider data set to try and get some insights and, and do some analytics and also do some data science activities like uh, AI and ML, right? That's one thing. Uh, and this was happening much before the current COVID crisis, right? And what I'm seeing is that I believe because of this crisis, this thing is going to accelerate. Now, the second trend we are also seeing and which will all probably also accelerate is the use of digital health information. And by that, what I mean is that, you know, leveraging uh, sensors and uh, wearables, sensors especially fitted in homes of customers or, you know, of folks, which is then transmitting data back on the cloud. And uh, that data is then being analyzed, right, uh, on a per patient basis, as well as by grouping a group of patients and, and trying to derive insights out of that as well. So these are current two trends that I believe is is where this industry is heading. And I believe HDI is very well placed to take advantage of that. And um, apart from taking advantage, also to help uh, bridge these two industries. Now, uh, one other thing I would like to add, uh, Damien, is that, you know, with the personalized healthcare, you know, I believe that a, a feedback loop if, is going to get much more tighter between these two industries, right? Because in order to deliver personalized healthcare, you know, healthcare providers have to communicate back into the life sciences and the pharma industry. And similarly, uh, you know, the pharma industry has to communicate uh, and has to work very closely with the healthcare providers and researchers uh, in order to be able to get the information they need to be able to deliver that personalized healthcare. Yeah, excellent. So, you know, that's very exciting stuff. I'm really excited to see what's gonna what's gonna come along for HDI. Again, I think we're we're perfectly placed for it too. 
Um, to a little bit more to the to the point uh, that you were saying, how it's kind of shifting in personalized healthcare types of wearables, all that convergence of all those different data points coming together. We've got a client that we're working with now that spots like the opportunity and potential to positively impact the whole bigger picture of the healthcare experience for a person, um, mm -hmm. the providers, and then also the family, the community, and the business partners that are all involved. So. Can you tell us a little bit about that story, not not naming names or anything, but can you kind of give us an idea of how we supported their journey? Sure. So the customer that you're referring to, uh, Damien, is a um, customer who's um, our customer who's actually targeting senior living, right? And um, the idea is for those clients or seniors who are not uh, who would like to uh, basically stay home rather than go and stay at a senior living home. So the so the way this works is their homes are fitted with a lot of sensors, different kinds of sensors, biometric sensors, daily activity living sensors, fall sensors, and so on and so forth. And the data that is uh, generated by these sensors is, um, you know, essentially in real time streamed back to our data platforms, right, which is now residing in the cloud. That uh, data that then streams back ends up in a data lake which is then used by dashboards which essentially then allow our customer uh, to be able to monitor those patients in a, in a continuous manner so they're always monitoring uh, with a lot of alerting all set up right and uh, and that's one way of, of being able to monitor the the seniors clients and then the other thing is also this platform also has the capability of securely communicating both through audio and video chat with those clients, the senior clients. Now, with the this is obviously this is a customer that we've been working for the past one and a half years. But uh, what we are seeing is um, now we are starting to hear that this is probably going to expand not just into seniors, not just for seniors, but for other customers as well. Right. That's you know, right. Absolutely. And then the other thing is, since this data is coming in into the data lake with uh, with anonymization and uh, pseudonymization, we have the capability, as I said, again, if you go back to the personalized healthcare scenario, we're able to analyze the data of an individual patient in combination with these overall set of data to look at trends and look at different kinds of analytics. And uh, uh, the idea is that hopefully we are able to predict through AI and ML, predict onset of illness much before it actually starts to manifest itself as symptoms, right? That's the goal uh, behind a platform like this. And we are seeing a lot more of this use cases. Um, but the key here, again, once again, what is helping us being able to provide these kind of solutions is of course, the fact that we have so much of experience with the cloud and building such platforms, we have the capability of building such digital platforms very rapidly in the cloud because we have a lot of IP uh, with regards to that. You know, also the fact that we are, you know, we maintain HIPAA compliance and uh, for the pharma industry, GHP compliance. So this actually makes us uh, tie into these use cases in a much more secure and compliant manner. Yeah, I'm, I'm ex really excited to see the future of this all. I think it's going to change the way that healthcare and medicine, it, it, you know, is done in the world, especially in this country, to get started. Uh, I think somebody like myself who, who has managed health, you know, heart types of uh, conditions or, or histories in that regard, is being able to monitor that and keep that uh, visible on a, on a regular basis and maybe predict when you might need to get some help. That's yeah. it's invaluable, right? It's, it's fantastic to be able to do that, and I, I, I'm I'm really really excited that we're able to be part of that and contribute to that. Saying yeah, no, that's uh, exciting times for us. I mean, I know this is uh, the COVID crisis has kind of put a halt on a lot of things, a lot of the activities, but we should be coming out of this uh, very quickly and much stronger. I agree. Speaking of that, I'm going to put you on the hot seat with a hot seat question. All right, you ready for this? Sure. <laughs> All right. So throughout this whole coronavirus and COVID-19 pandemic, what's your favorite hobby there? Um, so what I've been doing, let me let me let me answer the question by saying what what exactly I've been doing when I'm not working. Right. Is a couple of things. One is uh, I've been experimenting with a lot of cooking, especially healthy cooking. 
now that uh, the exercising is uh, and the activities that we used to do is a little curtailed so uh, you know so i am experimenting with a lot of healthy cooking that's one thing and the second thing is of course with schools out uh, you know my kids um, they thought they're going to have a good time not having to study and all that kind of stuff but <laughs> so i've been trying to you know play the role of a tu tutor slash teacher and uh, you know try to trying to brush up on on the different subject areas so that i can you know get them to at least work with them uh, so that they are not missing a, a whole lot during the school, the school year that they have actually missed that's what i'm uh, that's what i've been doing <laughs> uh clearly the uh, you know the since with things opening up now it's uh, you know we are starting to venture out and hiking and that kind of stuff but primarily yes healthy cooking and uh, tutoring my kids well good good for you that's 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 great to hear i love it well thanks for spending the time with me on that i appreciate and i, I look forward to, to what's to come so glad to go there with you sure thank you damon i appreciate it Expect to hear more news and details about the exciting direction that we're taking with Healthcare Triangle. I'll be reaching out over the next couple of weeks for sure. Hopefully we'll get a chance to talk. Again, thank you for your efforts in, in putting yourself at risk for the better of the communities and the country and the world. Let's get to the final segment. I hope you enjoy it. Take care. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining me. To come before the storm where I know it's been coming for some time when it's over so they say it will rain a sunny day where I know shining down like water sunny day Yesterday and days before Rain was cold and sun was hard when I know I've been that way for all my time Until forever on it goes Through the circle fast and slow I know it can't stop, I wonder Coming down on a sunny day